know you've probably had your fair share of these conversations, like you're about to roll your eyes when I ask about chip shortages, but I was listening to your recent interview on Fox News and you spoke about, or, or actually they, they kind of asked you about the impact of, of the chip shortage. Um, and you had spoken to that effect of the impact that it has had on all automakers. I can only imagine that moving all in on electrification means a heavier dependence on chips, microchips, um, computer systems, all of those sorts of things. Have there been any conversations perhaps internally about how to mitigate this type of scenario from happening again in the future? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this isn't the first time that the industry has been hit with um, uh, supply shortages or, or supply chain difficulties. Uh, that's true for, I think, all OEMs, and including Nissan. Um, uh, a robust um, global supply chain is is uh, always needed, and, and we continue those conversations. You know, we're really in reinventing Nissan uh, from the ground up, change the business, change the culture, change the product. And uh, we've done a great job on the product side, new Sentra, new Rogue, new Pathfinder, new Frontier, all coming at us. Uh, and selling well in the marketplace. Um, as a matter of fact, we just launched the all new frontier and uh, we've changed business um, in many different ways. Uh, and then changing the culture is all about changing the people and the attitudes and uh, within you know, changing the business um, and changing the culture is the supply chain uh, piece that you've, you've taught, you've, uh, you've asked about. And uh, we're certainly looking and examining our supply chain really every day to make sure that, uh, that it can deliver what we expect and uh, so that we can deliver a, a, a product to consumer uh, that's that's safe, uh, that's reliable and affordable as well. Um, so it, I would say it's an ongoing process every day. Uh, certainly, uh, this shortage has opened our eyes up to uh, some gaps uh, in terms of uh, of uh, the robustness, and uh, we're working hard to correct those. And so, you know, the chip uh, shortage is affecting us. It's affecting the entire industry. Uh, we're starting to see the the light and, and climb out, but it's it's a long climb out, uh, uh, and not just for our industry, for some other industries as well. Yeah, and I can only imagine just from an organizational perspective, how many plates are spinning at once to navigate a scenario like this, such as this, where perhaps where the rubber meets the road at the dealer level or at the ind retail industry side of things, there's no way for us to actually know all of the things that are crossing your desk that factor into this. But I can only imagine um, there are things that we don't understand. And it, and it always interests me because I don't get the opportunity often to, to meet with executives such as yourself at the OEM level. Um, but I can only imagine that there, there must be instances where it's like, okay, guys, but you're not thinking about this. No, we are not here against you. We are not trying to destroy, <laughs> you know, retail. Because that's, you know, humans are absolute beings. We're like, have a little toothache and we're like, oh, I got job cancer or something like that. Right. Um, and that certainly tends to be the, the case from what I observe where the rubber meets the road. They, they don't anticipate all of the things that you guys are dealing with at your level. And it translates down here at, Oh, well, they just want to get, this is just another ploy to get rid of the dealer network. Yeah, Michael, what are your you may, thoughts on that? Well, you may have recall, I think I said it and it was in one of the interviews that I did recently. I think it might've been with Stuart Barney and Fox. Uh, we, I referred to it as a Rubik's cube and, uh, you know, every day, um, uh, the, the sales operations leaders here and our supply chain leaders are meeting, uh, to discuss, uh, where the chips go, but it's really interesting, um, because it's not about a chip just going to a factory and then getting put in a car and ooh, we got a car. Uh, the chip goes into a module, a get, chip gets built, goes into a module, goes into a component, goes into assembly and maybe 12 weeks or, you know, 14, 15 weeks later, that, uh, may end up um, in a vehicle someplace. And uh, it's not just that one chip. There's other chips coming from another direction in another component. They've all got to arrive at the same time to build. And if you're absent one or two or three, you can't build that day. And maybe you have to close your plants. And you know that there's been some you know plant closures along the way as a result of for, for everyone in the industry. So it's a, it's a Rubik's Cube. We work every day. We roll up our sleeves. Uh, internally and then working with our suppliers who have been tremendous in this uh, 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 in this shortage uh, to figure out exactly where those chips need to go so that we can all bring the exact same spot at just the right time to build a car. So far, we've been pretty successful. Day supply, 
um, certainly lower than it's been in many, many years. And that has some disadvantages, um, but it also has some advantages as well. And, um, uh, you know, I would say our, our, we've been able to keep up uh, mostly, but uh, um, I think the industry uh, will be stronger for all of this in the end. I'm Michael Cirillo, and you've been listening to the Dealer Playbook Podcast. If you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. Leave a rating or review and share it with a colleague. Thanks for listening.